Hello, cheapskaters. Welcome. I've lost my doobie. Welcome. Oh, nothing's working tonight. Okay, we'll start again. Hello, cheapskaters, and welcome. We've got 34 people watching. Did everyone remember Daylight Saving has finished? It is Tuesday, the 9th of April, 2024, and this is a YouTube live event. That means live chat is, live chat is enabled, so please feel free to join in. Unfortunately, Delaney can't join us tonight. She acts as our moderator, so please play nice. Remember the rules. Be polite and kind and courteous. Treat others as you would like them to treat you, and we'll all get along just fine. My name is Kath, if you are new to our channel, and I am the creator of the Cheapskates Club, where our goal is to live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing. And tonight, we're going to talk about using your cash budget. Now, while we wait for everyone to log, log on, let's just see. 34 people watching. Um, lots of comments already. Um, hello, Beverly. My, you were early. You forgot Daylight Saving had ended. Um, and Yvonne, hi, Estelle. Uh, hello, Selena. We're glad you could join us too, Catherine. That's really good. Hi, Kylie. Hello, Sylvia and Rochelle. Mrs. Dillagaff. Hi, Vanna. Hello, Aradia and... Jules, no light, no daylight saving means you have to stay up longer. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry about that. Just can't win, can we? And Daniel Berry Sports Highlights is morning. And Melissa. Hi, Melissa. Hello, Utah. Hello, Glennis and Wild Woman. Um, Estelle says, having a second moderator might be useful for the times Delaney, Delaney can't be here maybe it would be not quite that easy though um, hi Kelly it is good timing for this topic you spurred me on Selena it's been on my list of things to talk about you spurred me on this week and no you're not late Beverly okay we've got 41 people watching as we're talking tonight folks Ask your questions, all in capitals, they'll stand out for me. If you are not able to join live chat, it just means you have to be logged into your YouTube account. Um, leave your questions in the comments below and I will um, see, see them and answer them as best I can. Hello, Amanda. Okay, now I've got a bit to get through. I know I said it would, would be simple and easy and I'll simplify the process. Still, I want to explain it. So, let's get started. There seems to be some confusion about using cash budget. How to separate it, how to use it, when to top it up. It's like even how to decide what parts of your budget should be cash. Now, for April, we have the 30-day cash diet going on, the challenge where we just use cash for 30 days. It's been fun. Now, I've been away for a few days, so I haven't caught up with the forum to see what's going on in there. But I will be doing that either later tonight or first thing tomorrow morning because I love cash. It is so easy. It is so easy to use and it is easy to track and using a cash budget is really simple so when you overcomplicate it it becomes overwhelming we don't want to do that it is simple i did notice that this week or the last few days while i've been researching for tonight even i've been overwhelmed there are so many options for budgeting, for cash budgeting. Um, what do they call them? Cash stuffing, envelope stuffing, um, whatever you want to call it. 
it's all the same thing, guys. It's just fancy delusional names for the same thing. It's basic envelope budgeting system that your grandma, your great-grandma, your great-great-grandma probably always used. It's not complicated. But there are so many options available out there. I honestly had no idea there were so many. I was quite, quite um, shocked. So it's no wonder there's, there's confusion because they all have different names. They all have different names. So I just want to stress this one point. Don't overcomplicate it. It's, there's nothing complicated about it. So don't stew yourself up while you're thinking about it and make it difficult. Keep things simple. Keep them straightforward. Now, we have to take a step back, though, before we actually start stuffing our envelopes or our Ziploc bags or our fancy budget purse. And you've all seen my budget purses. They've come from all over the place. Because we need to know, and this is a need. Everyone would need this. This is a need. It's not a, a perhaps or a maybe. This is an absolute need. It's a must need to know your budget. You need to know how much money you have coming in and how much you have going out. Hopefully you do already know that. And hopefully the incoming is more than the outgoing. If it's not, we will deal with that next week. For tonight, we just want to figure out how much cash you need for your cash budget. So what you need to do, there's that four letter word again, need, is add up your income or your pay, your partner's pay, whatever pay you have, any family allowance that you get, any casual income you have coming in on a, a regular or semi-regular basis. You need to add up all your income, all the money you earn and total it. Now, if you're paid weekly, do it weekly. If you're paid fortnightly, do it fortnightly. If you're paid monthly, do it monthly. If you're paid weekly and your partner's paid fortnightly, do it fortnightly. It's just easier. Trust me on this. It is just easier. Just don't overcomplicate it. So you're going to add it up for whenever it is, whatever your time frame. It doesn't really matter at the moment the time frame you just need to know how much money you have to cover your expenses and to get that that amount you need to know how much money is coming in then you need to make a note of all your expenses and add them up it's probably a little stressful to do that expenses can be that way in this, you're going to have to be quite pedantic and list them all. The rent or the mortgage, your utilities, which is gas, electricity, water, phone, internet, um, insurances or your car costs. And that would include things like um, your registration, your compulsory third party, your comprehensive insurance, maintenance, tyres, services, fuel, that sort of thing. School costs. If you have children at school and you, you're putting your hands in your pocket all the time, then you need to list those expenses. The fees, the sports sports costs, uniforms, photos, camps, um, excursions. Have I forgotten anything? It's been a while since I've had kids at school, but if you've got kids at school, you will know exactly how expensive it is and what expenses you need to cover. So list them. Groceries. It's a bit of a no-brainer. We all have to eat. Um, eating out. If you eat out or get takeaway, list it. How much do you spend on that each pay period? Mad money. We should all have some mad money. It's money that it doesn't have to be a lot, but it's money that's ours. And if I want to blow it on donuts, I can blow it on donuts and not answer to anyone. It doesn't affect the budget. Um, if I want to save it up and buy 
pair of shoes, I can do that. It's my money. It's mad money. But everyone should have some money that is just theirs, even if it's just $5 a week in their budget. Pharmacy bills, physio, other medical costs. If you've got them, list them. Um, home repairs and maintenance. Holidays. You're going away for school holidays or Christmas holidays or whatever. You need to list them. They cost money. Even if it's just fuel in the car to get to grandma's house, it still costs money. Christmas, birthdays, self-care. And this could cover things like your hairdressing or your barber expenses, nails, makeup, skincare, gym fees, that sort of thing. Anything that comes under the self-care banner, you'll know, you'll know what they are if you do them. If you don't do them, don't list them. Simple. Now, if you already know how much you're paying out for these things, just make a note next to each item on your list and you're halfway there. You need to do this so you can see what your cash expenses are and so you know how much you need to withdraw from the bank for your envelopes or your purses or your little folders or your plastic bags or pencil cases, whatever you're going to use. Okay, it's not difficult. Who's sending me a message? Go away. Um, it's not difficult. It can happen. Um, everybody can do this. Everybody can do this. And it is not um, complicated at all. Okay. A um, few more people have joined us. Hello, Fiona. Um, Outback Six, Coralie, Emma, Estelle's lost her budget book. I'll just start a new one. Um, um, hi Julie um, hi Jane see no daylight savings you could join us normal time um, hello Vicky um, school was very expensive um, Um, Andrea says newspaper subscriptions and the all-important library fine because you got too many too engrossing cooking books or gardening books. I don't have any of those, so they weren't on my list. Um, preparation does prevent panic, Kylie. My own person. Hello, are you new? I don't recognise your, your name. Um, okay. And green apple, I think you might be new too. Welcome. Trying to just use cash for this month. Yeah, use cash, 30 days. 30 days of using cash. It's actually really simple. Um, um, hi, Annabelle. And okay, so everyone's caught up. We've got 61 people watching. If you could give me a thumbs up, I would really appreciate it. Um, as Kylie or Kelly said, thumbs up for Kat. That would be lovely. Thank you. Okay. Now, obviously, there's going to be some expenses that can't be cash. Your rent or mortgage is probably going to have to be a direct debit, a bank transfer of some kind. But apart from that, anything else is potentially a cash expense. You can go to the post office and pay your bills in cash. You can get cash from the bank, go to the post office, you can pay your water, your gas, your electricity, your phone, insurances, any bill you get that has a has a um, thing on the back that it will tell you, you can pay it Australia Post, you can do that. And if you do that, you're getting cash from the bank so you're keeping the bank open and you're using the post office so you're keeping the post office open. Two things that we really need to do okay now once you've got all your expenses listed 
add them up, divide them by how often you get paid, and that's how much you need to stash each pay period. Now, for example, to calculate your utility bills, get them for the past year. A year is a good, good time to go on. You can look them up online if you have to. Add them up and divide them by, by how often you get paid. So if it comes to $1,200 and you get paid monthly, you are putting $100 a month into your electricity envelope or your gas envelope or your water envelope. Hope you're not spending that much on water. Um, if you get paid monthly, you divide the total by 12. If you get paid fortnightly, you divide it by 26. And if you get paid weekly, divide it by 52. It is simple. It's not complicated. A calculator does it for you. It will give you the total you need to withdraw each pay period. You can do, do it for all your expenses, your insurances, medi medical bills, any regular medical bills you have, or your school costs, any expense you have, you can do it for. It's basic budgeting. We're just going to turn it into cash. Now, this little exercise, it shouldn't stress you out and it shouldn't take more than 10 minutes. Absolutely should not. But it will give you the total that you'll be withdrawing each payday. That's what we need. Then you just go to the bank or your local ATM and you withdraw the cash. And then comes the fun part, the stuffing of the envelopes or the folders or the pencil cases. That's fun. Now, if you want to, you can break the amounts down by denomination and get the exact change from the bank. I used to do that way back in the beginning, 29 years ago when we had when disaster struck and we had no money. I didn't even have five cents left over to spare. We really, maybe we were the original zero budgeters. I went to the bank and I got the exact amount. I knew how many 50s, 20s, 10s, 5s, 2s, 1s, 50 cent coins, 20 cent coins, 10 cent coins, 5 cent coins. I knew how much I needed of each one so that I could allocate it to my envelopes. And they were just paper envelopes, brown paper envelopes. And what I'd done was I'd written um, electricity and the amount that to go into it and underneath it I wrote what denominations I needed to make up that amount each week with each fortnight to go into that envelope. It worked really well. Now it's quite tricky to do that these days because try to find a bank and then try to find a bank that has cash, try to find a bank that will serve you. It's really interesting. I get my amount, but I sort of round up to the nearest dollar when I'm putting it in the envelopes now. So if it's $54 that's got to go into the envelope, then I put in 55. That is just for my convenience and because our lifestyle's changed a little bit in the last 29 years and I don't have to be quite so strict about the amounts I put into the envelopes. I still have to budget. I'm still budgeting. I'll be budgeting for many long years to come, I am sure. But I just got that bit of, you know, bit of wriggle room. Now, if you've watched us for a while, you will know that I've used purses for years, little purses. Um, I moved from the envelopes to plastic bags and onto all sorts of little purses. Um, um, Selena wants to know. Um, no, because it'll be the information will be on the bottom of your bill that you get by email. So you can either print it if you want to or take it to the post office and just open it so that they can scan the 
barcode. There should be a barcode or a QR code. Some of our bills have started coming with QR codes, which is really weird, um, on them. So, so that the lady or the man at the post office can just scan it for you um, or print it. I actually, I hate email bills. I absolutely loathe email bills. I like to have a physical copy where I can stamp it with my paid stamp and the date and file it away and I, I have a hard copy then so I know it's done. Um, but no, you don't have to. Um, yes, there is in our bill paying system, there's a daily spending record. Um, that works really well. I have that on my list for talking about budgeting next week, Jules. Um, right. You know what, Andrea? They still charge you for it. You can email bill and they're still charging you, which is really annoying. They might as well just send me that paper bill. Um, bone of contention with me. Um, bonus. That would be a nice little boost to your, your electricity envelope, especially coming into winter. Um, Fiona wants to know brown paper bags or white ones where you can try $2 shops the reject shop um, if you have a uh, what are they called now crazy crazy clints the warehouse I've forgotten what it's called now I've lost track because we don't have one anymore places like that I know our little local $2 shop has them they're still $2 oh, I've gone up to $2.50 um, for the lunch style paper bags. I think they actually call them lunch bags, but they're a bit heavier than the lunch bags that you get at the supermarket. Um, Bendigo Bank have branches everywhere. Good to know. Annabelle has an op shopping purse. Yes. Um, yeah, I don't know, Estelle. I don't use QR codes. I try to avoid technology as much as I can. Um, it annoys the bejeebas out of me. Um, I, I, I was away over the weekend and someone had to pay me some money and they wanted to know if I had pay ID and I went no and they looked at me like I was, you know, should be hunt, out hunting dinosaurs or something. I'm oh, sorry, no, I don't. You can transfer it into my bank account or you can give me cash, <laughs> um, which isn't, I just don't have it. I don't like too many things like that. No, I'm not good. We have such um, issues with privacy and um, ID theft and it's just ridiculous. Okay. Bank of Queensland. Bank of Queensland's a nice little bank too, Selena, I think. Um, <laughs> sneak preview. <laughs> I aim to please. <laughs> Thank you, Jules. Yeah, I work. I'm sort of do, doing it a bit out of order with doing our budget purses and our cash budget tonight. But the question was asked and then I got a couple of contact us about it. And so I thought, well, let's just do it and then we'll jump into the other stuff. Yeah, QR codes are on everything now. Something the other day and they said to me, oh, just scan your QR code. And I just thought, I don't know how to do that. I don't even have the... My phone is for making phone calls and sending text messages. It is not for doing fancy stuff. It's a phone. 
Hello, telephone, talking and texting. That's it. I don't use it for anything else. Um, um, yeah, I, nothing's totally secured. Nothing's to, nothing is totally secure. Nothing is totally secure. How many times do you go to log into online banking or something else where you've set up a username and password and you get a one-time code and they'll send it to your phone or send it to your email and you've got to enter the number before you can actually log in, even though you've got your username and password? If, it was, if, their, if their internet security was actually secure, they would not need to send you a one-time code every time you tried to log in. It nearly drives me to distraction. Um, um, hi, Tegan. Um, well, you see, my phone is a phone. I don't do stuff on my phone, so... I've no intention of upgrading it anytime soon. It works. Um, anyway, okay, so I've used my little purses. Back to cash budgets. I've used my little purses for years. We've talked about them on the show. You've, I've shown them to you. Hannah still uses hers. She's got them. But um, the last month or so, in fact, it was just after I did the last cash purse budget update which was probably two months ago, um, things changed a little for us and that's okay because you know what? Budgets are supposed to change. They're not set in cement. They are supposed to be fluid things that change as your lifestyle and your needs change. So I've actually bitten the bullet and upgraded to pencil cases. I picked up these ones these little beauties. I had a look. Everyone was talking about the 75 cent Kmart ones, but they're black. Eek. So I picked up these ones. Oop. These are pink. Where am I going? Picked up these. So I've got, well, that's Christmas clothes, mad money. You can't see because the lights. Let me see if I can fix those lights so it's not quite so glary on them and you'll be able to see better. Maybe. Um, all important craft. Fuel. Groceries. Holidays. Chemist. That covers all our medical bills. So the extra physio and stuff like that. Birthdays. And then two that I didn't actually have in purses, but one is slush fund and one is cash emergency fund. We have an emergency fund in our bank account. This is a cash emergency fund. They work really well, really, really well. Um, and I'm liking the pink much better than the blank. Black. <laughs> it's a bit boring, black, isn't it? Um, they're still only 75 cents at Officeworks. Um, 75 cents at Kmart for the black ones. And Big W has the same style for 75 cents. That must be the price of them. Um, Kmart just has black ones at the moment. Big W has colours and Officeworks has black, a rather ugly blue, pink or green. Um, I chose pink because I like pink. It's bright. It's cheerful. It's pretty. And honestly, I'm just like you guys. If, if a tool is attractive and as well as useful, then I'm going to use it more, aren't I? It gets used to its full potential rather than me going, black purses, I don't like them. And they're a, they're a chore to use them. So I'll run over the categories again. These are just my categories. Um, groceries, fuel. Now that's for both our cars. So that covers petrol and diesel. 
um, chemist and I've lumped all our medical into the chemist one. Birthdays, Christmas, holidays, that's our weekends away, our big trips that we do, you know, a week away here or there, whatever, comes out of that. Mad money, clothes, uh, what else did I have? The cash emergency fund and the slush fund on craft. I've budgeted in my craft money. I have to budget it anyway. But I've made sure that I have a purse just for that so that when I see something, I can buy it without stressing about you know, whether we're going to eat that week or not. Now, the cash emergency, where did I just put them? Cash emergency is um, simply so that I can build up a cash stash of emergency money in the house. It won't be a gazillion dollars. We don't have a gazillion dollars, but it will be there so that if there's an emergency and the internet goes down or the power goes down or the bank closes, I can still access our emergency fund with the cash. I don't have to panic about it. We have a little cash. We always keep cash. So it goes into our emergency, our emergency purse. The slush fund is new. I used to just call it the slush fund and leave the money in my grocery, grocery budget. The, um, at the end of the month, whatever's left in the grocery budget is taken out of the grocery pencil case now and put into the slush fund case. And that's so that if there's a really good deal on tea bags or coffee or butter, please, or whatever, baked beans or chicken, brisket, whatever, I've got money to be able to go and buy it without it actually affecting our budget. So it's still grocery money, but I'm just moving it out so that at the beginning of each month, I top up the purse with the full month's gross purse, the pencil case, with the full month's grocery money. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, Selena, why have a cash and a bank emergency fund? Exactly. I think Andrea said, yeah, if the power goes out, banks will close. Um, the internet goes down, can't access banks, um, ATMs can't be used, things like that. So having cash as well as our, our bank account, the majority, majority of it's in the bank. We don't want to have all that money sitting just, you know, in our, in our safe, in our house. That's, that's not wise. But we've got enough to get us through what we think we need in, in cash. So that's why I have a cash purse. Um, yeah. Yeah. I am living on the wild side, Glenis. Um, I, because um, usually I like, okay, it, it costs a whole whopping $8.25 for the pencil cases. It was a bit of an extravagance. I already had the vinyl to cut the labels. I just cut them on the scan and cut. Um, but, I could have scrounged round and used other things. I just thought, for a change, I'm just going to have something new and pretty. We don't always have to be, you know, living the cheapskates way doesn't always mean living poor. In fact, we live the cheapskates way so that we don't live poor, don't we? Um, Glennis is a cyclone expert. Yes, she knows to keep cash on hand. Well done. Um, 
Okay. Alrighty, now back to my notes. My pencil cases, you know, I chose pencil cases. You might choose something else. You do yours. Pencil cases, envelopes, um, Ziploc bags, tin cans. It doesn't matter. Whatever works for your needs is that will hold your money is what you use. Um, there's no hard and fast rule. There is no hard and fast rule about the container for your cash. <laughs> there just isn't. Just as there's no hard and fast rule for the categories because those are all the things for us. We all have different budgets. Your budget only has to work for you. doesn't have to work for me. Mine doesn't have to work for you. only has to work for you. So you do your categories. There's nothing for school in mine because I don't do, we don't have school. Now, you might have noticed that I put the budgeted amount on the front of most of the, um, most of the um, pencil cases. I don't know if I can get it up so you can see it there. Hold it down, hold it down, go this way. So you got $25 on birthdays. So every month I put $25 into the birthday purse. Just a little reminder for me. That's all. You don't have to do that. You might not want to. It works for me like I used to do on the envelopes. I had the amount and the breakdown. Well, there you go. I haven't put an amount on our clothes case yet because I'm still working on it. The clothes budget has to cover Wayne and I and, well, neither of us is really hard on clothes. Even op shops are getting expensive. So I'm sort of still reviewing that budget. I haven't quite set on it yet. I don't know whether I need to increase it or leave it the same. I'm, I'm As we're churning over our wardrobe from summer to winter, I'm sort of making a list of what we need so I can check the prices. I'll check them for new and I'll check for gently used because sometimes new is actually cheaper and how much it might cost to make it if it's something that I can make, if I've got fabric or patterns or whatever. Um, before I set the budget for the year for our clothes. So it's it just says clothes. Right, now. Um, I explained the slush fund, didn't I? At the end of the month, I take the leftover grocery money. I've always done this and transferred it to the slush fund. Um, and then that's the cash I use to buy the specials so that a grocery budget every year is always the same. I use it all. It all gets used. There's never any left at the end of December, but I also haven't gone over budget at the end of December. Um, what I do with fuel, any excess fuel money at the end of the month is transferred from the fuel pencil case into the holiday pencil case. It boosts our holiday budget but it just means there's a little extra in there um, to cover fuel because most of the places we go are quite remote and fuel is rather expensive um, and it's going to get more expensive start start saving up because your unleaded is about to jump to about two dollars thirty and stay there that will be about the low for the next few months apparently so that's a bit scary um what i do with the others like the the pharmacy the um birthdays christmas mad money craft money and things like that i just let them build up over the year anything that's left on the 31st of december gets emptied out and put into our savings so that we start the new year off with an empty purse pretty much from the 1st of January. So we're starting from scratch with that. Budgeting shouldn't be hard. It shouldn't be complicated. It shouldn't be stressful. And like I mentioned at the beginning of the show, don't overthink it. Just work out your expenses. 
which ones you can pay in cash or which ones you would like to pay in cash and get the cash out, divvy it up and then put it in your envelopes or your plastic bags or whatever you're using. It's easy. It's very comforting to know that you have that money put aside. It's in your envelopes. And it's in those envelopes to be used. As long as you are strong and you remember that when the envelope or the pencil case or whatever is empty, that's it until next payday, your cash budget is going to work beautifully for you. It will be the best thing for controlling mad impulse buys, for keeping you on track, for easing the stress of worrying about how you're going to pay the bills. It just works. So I just want to say there's lots of budgeting systems out there and they are lovely to look at. There's purses with tabs and you put labels on them and whatever or there's folders with little um, inserts that go into them and you can label them and put your money in or whatever. They are great. They all work the same way. It's all working on the basic, same basic principle. But those things are really expensive. My new pencil cases cost $8.25 to set them up. Envelopes are cheaper. Ziploc bags are even cheaper, I think, about $0.36 cents for 12 Ziploc bags. That's, that's pretty cheap. <laughs> um, there's plenty of, of cheapskate style, budget-friendly cash stuffing tools that you can use. So don't think you need to spend 50 or 60 or 90 or more dollars on a system, a system to, to do your cash budget because you don't. You can copy my envelopes I, uh, my pencil cases I don't care you can look at some of those fancy ones and take the best ideas from them that work for you and put them all together and create your own but again if you're going to do that don't overcomplicate it don't spend more time in making it all pretty and tizzied up and gorgeous and not use it because the goal is to use it. The goal is to use it so that you can stick to your cash budget. So by all means, go for the pink. I did. Or the blue or the black if you like black or whatever. But make sure you use it. Don't spend so much time getting it all organised and categorised and labelled and whatever that... When it comes time to use it, you are just overwhelmed and can't. We all like pretty things, but they still need to be practical. Okay. And honestly, when it comes to a simple cash budget or envelope or cash, stuff, cash stuffing system, you've probably already got what you need in your home just waiting to be used. You just need to think outside the box. And it could be something as simple as um, envelopes or zippy bags or anyone eat those Eclipse mints? Those mint tins will hold notes and coins. And with our plastic notes, they fold up really small. They wind up really small. They fit. You can use those if you want to. Stick a sticker on them or write with a Sharpie what it is and you'll know. It's easy to do. There's lots of options around. It could be something as simple as, there you go, a tin. Just a little tin. Get some tins. This one's got pins in it. I was sewing. That's got my sewing pins in it, my quilting pins in it. Um, but they can um, 
or it could be um, what else have I got? Cardboard boxes, little cardboard boxes. Make make your own little cardboard boxes. Boxes are easy to make. I like making boxes. And do your own. Um, so many things you can do. You do not have to spend a fortune to um, spend a fortune to set up a budgeting system, a cash, cash budgeting system. Now, um, right, Jane's includes pet fund for the fur babies. We don't have pets, so we don't have that. I have to tell you guys, last week, not long after we finished last week, my phone rang and it was Hannah. And she sent me a photo and she had been watching um, watching the show, but she'd put it onto her TV. And there's Lacey Dog sitting up in front of the TV watching us. <laughs> She was like, Hannah said she was so tuned into it. She was like really focused on what we were saying or what I was saying. Oh, isn't that funny? So, so funny. Even Lacey the dog watches YouTube. Hi, Maddie. How are you? Um, Oh, it's nice to make new friends, Estelle. Well done. It's hard to break into a new area sometimes. Um, um, yes. Wait for sales and buy 10 at once. Yeah, I buy by the dozen. That's right. Um It's never ending. You may not have any debt, but we'll always, always have living expenses. You just have different living expenses to, to people in the city. Um, right on mile parts, water pump, sheep feed, chicken feed, fence posts, wire. Yep. Oh, everything seems to have broken in the last two months. Well, that's no good. It goes in cycles. I can remember my sister-in-law telling me when we got married that, Marriages in five-year cycles. She had figured out that sheets and tea towels and face washes and things like that lasted five years. Dishes would last five years and they'd start to chip, get broken, whatever, five years. And I laughed at it because I thought it was quite odd. It was pretty true. <laughs> they sort of things go in five-year cycles. That so was really quite interesting. I hope things get better for you, Maddie. Um, jelly jars for your coins yes peanut butter jars um, Vegemite jars soft I, I know there was a thing a couple of years ago about using the coke cans or the soft drink cans um, Julie uses makeup purses from that she got from the op shop um, yeah, my purses came from all over the place. Some of them were makeup purses, some of them were coin purses. They didn't match. Um, 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 jewelry shop bags to store notes. Yes. Lacey Dog is doing really well. Hannah was, I was away for the weekend, so Hannah came down to look after her father for me. And um, when she got home on Sunday night, she sort of backed into the driveway, into the carport, and Lacey was going nuts, and she couldn't figure out why. Anyway, when she got out of the car, she noticed her garbage bins had been moved in front of her back gate. Why? And there was a stray dog. There was a dog in her backyard. Now, it was obviously, it was a black dog. It looked a bit like Lacey. It wasn't a Kelpie, but it looked a bit like Lacey. And she thinks a neighbour has seen the dog in the street, thought it was Lacey and put her, or put her, it was a her, put her in the backyard 
thinking Hannah would be back. Well, Hannah was away for four days, so she doesn't know how long the dog was in the backyard with no food. There was water, but there was no food out for her. So she had to ring the ranger at um, 10 o'clock on Sunday night and say, oh, I've got this stray dog in my backyard and I've already got a dog, so it's not going to work because my dog doesn't like it and get the ranger to come and get it. Um, it was really weird, really odd. So but Lacey, um, Lacey's not a fan. She loves pups, puppies, fine with puppies. And she's fine with older dogs. But the younger, middle-aged type dogs, she does not like them at all. Um, she barks and growls at them. She doesn't attack them, but she barks and growls at them. Old square Tupperware containers, they're probably worth a fortune, Glennis. I've got square rounds that are still, um, the. remember when they were white and yellow and pink and green? They were my mum's, so they're pretty old. Um, that I'm reluctant to part with because for a start I like them. They're really good sizes. But anyway, yeah, winter is coming. We were talking um, last week about moving, moving the seasoned wood into the wood pile under the veranda and getting the fire all organised. Wayne, Wayne and the boys have done the tr -tr 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 with the wire brush and cleaned all the flue and chimney and everything. Because um, it won't be long and I think it might be. I know that we were told we would have a long, hot summer and it didn't quite happen. I noticed nothing's come about winter yet. So I'm sort of thinking it might be a cold winter. Um, I'm so glad you've got friendly neighbours, Estelle. If you have good neighbours, it makes so much difference. So much difference. You will love your wood heater, Selena. I, I would curl up in a ball and cry if we didn't have our wood heater. In winter, it, it dries the washing, it heats water, it heats the whole house. It's entertainment. I can sit in the chair and just watch those flames for hours if I if I wanted to. Collecting the firewood's good exercise. Chopping the wood's good exercise. Splitting the wood, well, the, wood, the log splitter does it, but stacking the wood's good exercise. I love our wood heater. It does make the house dusty. I do have to dust more often. I dust just about every day when we've got the fire going, but you know what? It only takes a second. It only takes a few minutes. Um, it makes such a difference. And with the wood heater, the house stays warm. Stays warm all the time. When we were using just the ducted heating, while we were waiting for our new one to go in a few years ago, and we were relying on the ducted heating, which we don't use at all now, um, the house is warm while the ducted heating is on. But once it goes off, the house cools down really quickly. With the wood heater, it just doesn't. The house stays warm. So we get up in the morning and it might be minus three outside, but it's still at 12, 13 degrees inside. It's lovely. Really good. You will love it. Yeah, Mount, Mount Buller and um, Mount Buller and Hotham had snow today too, um, which was very exciting. We got a photo from some friends who were camping on up at Hotham, and um, that was interesting. Um, Twenty cents each was a bargain, Yvonne. Yes, yeah, the ones with the inserts for your names, um, you can use them. Yeah, that was a steal. Uh, Selena, do you have an Aldi somewhere close by? We'll keep an eye out for the next few weeks, the next couple of weeks. They should um, have log splitters coming up. We got ours from Aldi. It wasn't expensive. It was I don't know, $179 or something. And honestly, it it is a workhorse. I wasn't too sure because it was, well, it was from Aldi. 
and it was inexpensive, but it is just brilliant. That thing just goes and goes and goes. It is so, so handy. So keep an eye out um, for Aldi. Oh, eight years, eight years without your wood heater. You will love it. Um, okay. Cold, wet winter. Okay. Aldi and Gimpy. Okay. I hope it's not too wet. We're heading... Um, I'm heading sort of Western Queensland in June and July and I'm hoping it's not going to be too wet. You really, really don't want it to be too wet. Last year it was just horrible. Well, it was so wet it was just ridiculous. But um, I hope it's not too I don't mind cold. It's easier to get warm than it is to get cool. In winter you can always work to get warm. In summer when you work you just get hot. Okay, all right, I better get finished because I'm wasting time. All right, so cash stuffing, envelope budgeting, whatever you want to call it, isn't difficult. It just means you do need to know how much cash to withdraw from your bank each payday and how much to put into each category. That's pretty simple. It shouldn't take you more than five or ten minutes to work that out. And once it's done, it's done. So you just rinse and repeat each pay pay period. It shouldn't be stressful. It shouldn't be complicated. Um, it does make life so much easier. It does. And you can go for pink pencil cases or you can go for whatever you like. It doesn't really matter. Next week we'll 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 take we'll go back to the very beginning and we'll walk through setting up a basic budget and using our bill paying system so that you don't have to worry about your bills and it will work really, really well. Okay. So thank you for sticking with me so far tonight. It was really, really good. But I thought this is an important topic. It's been raised a bit over the last week or so and it's sort of a basic of living the cheapskates way. So I hope you found it helpful. I hope it's eased your mind if you're a bit overwhelmed, a little confused about envelope budgeting or cash stuffing or whatever, whatever other trendy name it's been given. It's all the same thing, guys. It's all the same thing. Um, if you like the show, please give it a thumbs up. Those little likes really help our channel to grow, make it easy to find amongst the gazillions of YouTube channels that are out there. And if we're easier to find, it's easy for people, easier for people to find us, then it's easier for us to re reassure them that they can live life debt free, cashed up and laughing. It's not that difficult. You have to put the effort in, but it's not that difficult. If you're not already subscribed to our channel, I would be honoured if you would click that subscribe button so we can notify you of um, new videos and Tuesday Night Lives. Before I go, one last thing. If you have any, any questions, put them in the comments below me. I do read every comment. So if I see your question, I will do my best to answer it for you. Um, it might take me a day or two because I go over them and I go over them and I go over them. But I will do my best to answer your questions for you. Now, remember, you can log into the members and type in cash budget or budgeting and all sorts of stuff will come up to help you. Envelope system, stuff will come up to help you. You can go into the forum and talk about it. That's what it's there for. It's there for you guys. Or you can jump on Cheapskates Chatter, which is our Facebook group, and have a chat there, which is where Selena first posted a question about envelope budgeting. All right. Have a great week, everyone. I would love to hear about your envelope budgeting system next week. 
if you want to share it, how you do it. And we will be talking about basic budgeting, going back to basics. But until then, have a great week. Happy cheap skating. Stay warm, stay safe. And I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye.